Right. Um, I'm afraid I haven't got like a fancy slideshow or anything, but I've got like a ton of info to get through. So I hope it doesn't appear too disjointed. Uh, my talk's going to be broken up into three parts. Uh, first part will be about getting a job in the industry. Second part, will focus on what being a lead is like. And third part, if we have time for it, will be about the process of photogrammetry. Um, although a lot of that info can be found online, so no big deal if we don't have time to get to that. Yeah, so for my first job, I was in my second year of uni and was chatting to an indie developer, EGX, who was showcasing their game there. Uh, we had a friendly little chat whilst I was waiting in the queue, and I believe a friend of mine told them I was a 3D artist. They asked to look at my portfolio, and they liked what they saw, so they introduced me to their director, and he gave me like a pretty quick fire interview there and then. Um, then he asked about my av availability, and I said I could start like as soon as they needed. Um, they were impressed by my portfolio and wanted to give me an art test to see what my skills were like in regards to the style of their game specifically. Um, I had about one week to complete that test and they wanted me to start working for them like a couple of weeks after that. So it was all pretty like pretty quick and intense. Um, I had a pretty short time to get my stuff together and move to Derby where the studio was located. And yeah, it was pretty stressful, hectic and uh, expensive because I ended up paying like double rent for the time I was there because my place in Southampton I still had. But it was definitely worth it. It was uh, really fun and I learned so much from that experience. Um, although I was only there for four months over the summer after my second year, uh, gave me some extremely valuable experience of working in a team and using 3D software in a professional environment, as well as using source control and meeting deadlines for the tasks that I was set. Uh, then at the end of my third year, I got a job at Sumo Digital working on Sackboy Big Adventure. Um, I began as a junior artist, then within a couple of months I transitioned to a material artist role, which I'll go into a little, in a little bit. Uh, after being at Sumo for over a year, I decided I really wanted to go snowboarding for a whole winter season. So I moved to the Rocky Mountains in Canada and then got like a freelance 3D job. Uh, so I could like snowboard during the day and do 3D work in the evenings, which was like awesome. Then I had to move back to the UK because of the Rona and continue to do freelance work, uh, doing like 3D consultancy stuff and advising companies on like the best way to tackle like art related issues on their projects until I was approached by Happy Mushroom and offered the lead photogrammetry role that I'm currently in. So uh, that's all about me. I wanted to talk about getting a job in the games industry. And uh, I've managed to like, catch a few of the talks previously, but I don't know if anyone's brought this up yet or not. I've been like a bit dipping in and out. But I think a really important thing to be aware of as a graduate is to be aware of like what you can offer. So, for example, while you may not have that like heavily sought after experience, you've usually got a pretty up to date skill set. You're eager and you're flexible. So try and use those to your advantage. Uh, regarding the up-to-date skill set, when you're working, you don't have like nearly as much time or creative energy to like pursue portfolio work as often as you would when you're at uni, and um, you don't have as much time to do, like all the R and D stuff and find out about new workflows and all that kind of thing. So as a student, you're really like up to date on all the kind of newest software and newest workflows, and that can be really really useful info. To, uh, to a company. Um, for example, when I started at Sumo, I was a junior artist and uh, I was the only one in the team with like, a good knowledge of substance designer. And a few months in, they just so happened to be looking for a material artist. And my good friend and colleague put me forward for the role and suggested to Sumo that instead of going through the rigmarole of hiring an entirely new person for the role, they use me instead. And uh, substance was like kind of a new thing at the time. And thanks to the work I'd done at uni, learning about like up and coming softwares and, and techniques and workflows and stuff, I was able to make that leap from junior artist to material artist fairly early on in my career. Um, eagerness, like that's this is a pretty big one as well. Uh, graduates often have like a huge amount of passion. You know, this is a pivotal moment in your life and you're on the edge of achieving your dream job. So show that enthusiasm in cover letters, in interviews and with the people you interact with in the industry because that kind of passion is contagious and will really make you stand out as a candidate. Uh, availability as well. Um, don't limit yourself to just like one part of the country or even just one country if you can. Like companies are 
often like pretty desperate to fill roles as well. So if you can start in say like two or three weeks where other candidates might not be able to start for like four weeks or something, then that gives you a little bit of an edge over them too. Uh, in terms of moving to where the studio is located, you can always use sites like Spare Room to find some like fast accommodation, which is exactly what I had to do when I got my first job in uh, Derby. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty stressful, but yeah, it's definitely worth doing. And then once you've got that experience on your CV, like it gets so much easier from that point going forwards. Like just that little bit of first experience will start putting you in like a completely different bracket and jobs will be a lot easier to find. Uh, you should probably decide as well whether you're going to go for Indie or AAA. I'd say the barrier for entry to AAA is usually a little bit higher and they have like more people applying for those roles. So it can often be a little bit easier to get a role in Indie Studio first or at least like a AA Studio or something. So even if AAA is like your end goal, you could get a role at like an indie studio or double A studio and work there for maybe a year or so, get some experience and then transition to AAA if you want. Um, but on that note, while you do get to work on some amazing titles in AAA, you typically have less ownership of your work because it's often like passed around through various people and iterated on a bunch of times. So a notable advantage to working in indie is that you get a bit more ownership of your work and you have a bigger and more noticeable impact on the project. Uh, networking is also really important. Um, going to things like EGX Rest, that's a, a really great opportunity to go there and meet developers. And I know that's something that like you know the uni runs of every year. Probably not this year because everything going on. But um, you know if you can get yourself to these things and spend more of your time treating it as like a networking experience rather than like a fun sort of pleasure experience to go play a bunch of games then it can be really really useful because if you're applying for a bunch of jobs online you're sort of just like another kind of statistic or, or whatever you're not to some companies you're not like a, a real real person because if you can meet them in person and talk to them they'll see you as more of like a real person they'll get to know your like personality which is a pretty big part of getting a job as well um that's often not talked about as much as like your portfolio and stuff, but really your personality and how uh, easy to work with you are, friendly and approachable, you know, because companies are looking for someone to make the studio like a better place to work at as well as you know, someone that can do their job. So it's definitely worth taking that into consideration. Um, and don't be afraid to reach out and communicate with people in the industry through Twitter or email as well. Make it as easy as possible for potential employers to contact you. Uh, use like a professional email. Um, use a pretty professional profile picture too, if you can. I mean, it's the games industry, so you don't have to feel like dressed up in a suit and tie, but you know, just trying to like you're taking it seriously, obviously. And uh, yeah, I think I think the friendliness thing is a really big thing. Like I was talking to one of the art managers at one of my previous companies and he was saying how that's like a big a big thing for him when he's interviewing candidates is not just about the skills. You know, if you've got the skills, then you'll probably have gotten the interview in the first place. I think Kelly was saying previously that if you've got the interview, you sort of got the job by that point. It's kind of like an asshole test. And yeah, that's definitely true. So if you've got to that interview stage, then it is just about trying to get to know you as a person and if you can be really like confident and friendly that's going to go a long way because uh you know a lot of these people this is like their livelihood and they want to enjoy going to work every single day and if they can hire someone that's going to like bring the team together a little bit more then that's gonna that's gonna make you stand out quite a lot uh do lots of interviews if you can like even if it's not your dream job position the interview experience is extremely valuable and the more interviews you do the more comfortable you'll be in them so that when you do get that interview if you like your dream position you'll be like way more confident and know what to expect from the interview so it's worth doing as many of them as you can um, and if you're nervous about interviews then uh, 
do your best to pretend like you're not. Like <laughs> what you got to remember is the people interviewing you don't know you. So if you pretend to be confident, then they'll likely think you actually are confident. You know, like fake it till you make it and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that that was pretty it for getting the job in the industry. If anyone has any questions on anything, I've gone over there. I know it's quite a lot of uh, info for any at once, but yeah, if anyone's got anything that they'd like yeah, to ask I have about. A question. Yeah, go for it. Um, I wonder how would you approach an indie studio? Because I feel like um, often their jobs aren't listed on ArtStation or something like that. So for me, it's hard to to um, yeah find find a job in in this studio. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so going to stuff like EGX Res is a really good one, uh, or interacting with the studios online. Like often, especially with indie, they're kind of um, like social media managers and that kind of stuff there's a fair bit of overlap in communication between them and like the actual developers so if you could maybe even get a name for yourself on like forums or communicate with some of the developers online that go quite a long way um okay or even just i know there's like tons of indie studios out there but even just sending your application out to them as like a sort of potential you know yeah even if you don't know they offer a job yeah yeah absolutely because okay. um yeah like i think with my first job i didn't even know of the studio i didn't even know they were offering any jobs or anything um it was just from talking to them that that came about so okay thank you that's all right anyone else yeah anybody else i think there's one hand up in the chat is there okay thank you uh let's have a look yep apologies that didn't no i can't see the hand who is it who had the hand Come forward, brave soldier. Mystery hand. Mystery hand. Hey, mystery hey, hand. Okay. Hey, Zaid. Okay. Yes, Zaid. Yeah, we can um, hear you. Now. Yep. No, sorry, we can't. You're muted. There you go. We can hear you now. Brilliant. Now? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay. Thanks, Zaid. Yeah. So, how did you. Uh, managed to work whilst you in uh, uni. Was it during your summer break or was it when you had lectures? Yeah, yeah. So that first job was just during my summer break at the end of my second year. Okay. So I just worked for like four months there. Um, and there was a few other uh, junior artists that were working with me as well. So yeah, this indie studio, they it was made by people that came from uni. So they're all quite like aware of how everything works there. And they just had some stuff that needed doing so they hired like four people for four months and um it was a great opportunity for the students and also it was a great opportunity for the company as well because students are usually like pretty cheap labor so that can be quite appealing <laughs> to, to especially the indies that are working on a budget and uh you know they got like quite a bit done for those four months so Cool, cool. Anyone else? Thank, for a yes, anyone else. Thank you, Zaid. Um, I've got a question, George. Uh, yes. So when you, I remember when you were a student, you, I think if I'm correct, you started with, I remember one of your first pieces was a stylized vehicle, if I'm correct. It's like a, yeah. a, a VW or something. So how, how have you gone? What's the path that's taken you from there through to where you are now? Mm, I, I like variety. I like to experiment with different, like, art styles and workflows and um, like with every portfolio piece I do I try and learn a new technique software or workflow uh, so there was like that stylized vehicle there was um, just like a kind of like gothic Victorian scene I did and then I was like oh I've never really done foliage before so I did a whole scene based on like foliage um, and then uh, a while ago I did a scene based like purely on lighting because that was something I'd never really focused like entirely on so I quite like doing a whole portfolio piece to really like hone a specific skill like that um, and by doing that you know, I learned a lot of different things and like photogrammetry for instance uh, I think I did that in our advanced 3d module when I first learned about that um, so yeah I think it's good to really expand your horizons and dabble around with different workflows and techniques because you never know what like the next sort of big thing could be or 
if a job that you're interviewing for like requires that skill specifically. So how does that work in terms of portfolio? Because Happy Mushroom actually hunted you down, did they, and offered you the job? Yeah. Was that, yeah. Was that based on something they've seen or of yours or some good good feedback on you? Yeah, so it was based on some like photogrammetry pieces I had in my, my portfolio, which are actually like three years old now. Um, but it just showed that I had a knowledge of the process and uh, they liked some of the other stuff I had on my portfolio. And I think my CV as well carried me quite far. So I had that like prior experience and um, yeah, all those things combined is what they're quite keen on. So there's no concern about having a portfolio that's got well, almost too generalized. I mean, you've got lots of specialisms, but you're showing a lot of different types of things versus having one that's very focused. Is there a benefit? Um, the thing is, like, if it's generalized and the quality is not too great in all the stuff you're doing, then it's then it's not so good. It'll, it'll bring the thing down a bit. Um, for AAA, specializing is is more encouraged. So, for example, if you're certain that you want to go in AAA and you want to work at like Ubisoft or Rockstar or whatever, and you really like hard surface modeling, then like, you know, focus on that and really show that off in your portfolio. Um, but yeah, I personally just quite like variety, but I guess you have to be careful not to, um, yeah, not to let the quality come down too much if you're doing a bit of variety. And I quite like to really sort of get lost in the individual things I do and try and do each one of them to like a high standard. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, we've got Vanessa. Vanessa, you've got a question for George? Uh, it's more of a thank you. That was kind of uplifting. I mean, oftentimes when I hear those talks, it feels like you want to join the cool gang and these people are gods and you are nowhere near to that. But uh, <laughs> I found it pretty uplifting that you pointed out that we as freshly graduated students have our qualities and also that uh, for most people it's not just just the workspace. I mean, for some it is, but yeah, like you said, everyone wants a nice environment to work in. And uh, this this kind of uh, helped me calm down a bit. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for that. Oh, glad and, that's helped. Yeah, and maybe, maybe a question because you've just mentioned it. You had a Gothic kind of scene in your portfolio. I know I have some weird interests and they said it's okay to give your portfolio a personal touch. Would you encourage it or does it depend on your interests? Like, I, I don't I don't really know. I'm, I'm not a fan of doing fan art and stuff, but if it's too specific, are people going to be like, nah, I don't know what she's doing with that? Or would you encourage to totally go into your interests? And I don't know. Um, what, what do you mean by, by that exactly? Uh, I don't know. For me, for example, I've... I've dived a bit into into fairy tales, but the rather not so happy ones, and <laughs> <laughs> I found it quite interesting. And uh, there's a lot to explore. And I know, I mean, there's horror games and pretty gruesome stuff out there. But uh, as as junior, as student, I don't even know if I'm going to specialize in that later. But is it helpful to still put it in the portfolio, or are people be like, oh no, like in 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 terms of that goth related topic like is it is it frightening people or are they fine with it? <laughs> i mean this is the games industry like i really wouldn't worry about that like okay. um i remember hearing about jaeger when they were working on spec ops the line had to look at some really like messed up stuff for reference so it's like <laughs> it's the games industry it's probably going to happen i wouldn't worry about scaring people off if anything okay. like if that's your jam and that's what you like to do then by all means like go for it and put that on your portfolio and that can be your sort of niche and if anything that might even bring more attention to your portfolio because like you might get known as like the person that does that stuff if you're posting your art elsewhere and have a little bit of a kind of community or following or something i think it's it's fine to to do that although in terms of a job it's good to sort of branch out a little bit and show that you can do more than just one thing because if you just focus like purely on kind of like gothic stuff and then limit yourself to only being able to get a job at like i don't know from software or something it kind of like counts out a lot of other companies so it's good to have a bit of variety there to show you can do a few different things okay thank you Actually, as an extension of that, George, because I don't think anyone's got the hand up at the moment, um, a lot of students, especially art students in the first year, their dream job is to work at Blizzard. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them about the the art direction that they take and how they they 
they think about the future uh, is because you just mentioned you know don't just go for from software mm. uh, well i mean i was saying more like don't limit yourself to just okay. from software or just blizzard and yeah i think that that goes for all, all the different studios um yeah if your end goal is to go work at blizzard awesome that's fantastic but yeah be wary that that's the end goal of a lot of people so that's going to give you like going to make things even harder for you than if you're just like i just want to go into the games industry so even in that sense as well like that's unlikely to be your first role in the industry like that you'd have to be like insanely good to to land that's like your first role so maybe work on just getting your your foot in the door and get a role at another studio uh, whether it's like AAA, AA or Indie or something, get some experience and just think of it as that's your end goal and that's what you want to work towards eventually. Um, but it might be a little bit easier or more realistic at least to start off somewhere else and work your way up towards that. And it doesn't have to be for a long time. You know, you could only do like a year as a, a junior artist or a couple of years or something at a different studio before trying to transition to your dream one. Okay, thank you. Has anyone else got any questions for George? I've got a couple more, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, so what interests me is that, so you got a job immediately upon graduation at Sumo Digital, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. And then after a year of working there, which I think you did a lot of the material work for Sackboy Big Adventure, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, you decided to take a year out and go skiing. Is that, was that because the expectations of the industry didn't meet the reality? Is it that you wish you'd had a break after education? And you needed that break or was it something that you don't want to mention um i guess actually like yeah a little bit of it was wanting to have that break after education i'd always imagined i was going to have a gap here after uni and go explore travel the world and all that stuff um but yeah i got the job at sumo which i was insanely grateful for and i was like well i can't pass up this opportunity so i'm gonna go with it um and then after i got a bit of that experience i was like okay cool i've got this like year or by that point including the other jobs like maybe two years of experience in the industry now it's going to be a hell of a lot easier for me to come back to it so i can go off and do the traveling stuff come back after that and be able to like somewhat easily get a job whereas if i just gone straight to like traveling doing all that stuff i'd be like a year behind in terms of workflows and techniques and my skills so it'd be a lot harder to get back into the industry so you'd still recommend students without stressing them out too much try to get a job ASAP and then have a break potentially afterwards uh yeah well, yeah absolutely because uh you know at that point especially end of your third year you've just done like the biggest piece of of your work you've probably done a lot of research into current and up-and-coming techniques and softwares and workflows you're like the freshest you're kind of gonna be in terms of your skills and everything so that's the best time to start applying and it might take a while it might take like a year or, or however long but um that's the best time to do it because otherwise you finish uni and you might end up getting into like a day job or something and you have less time to work on your portfolio and your skills won't be quite like at their peak as they were so okay uh what's that thing adam the that that, that graph that people follow where they think they're amazing and then they don't do anything for the summer and then it all drops away <laughs> Danny Kruger, that's it. I don't know if Adam's told you guys about Danny Kruger, but it's worth looking up. And I think, yeah, don't let your skills atrophy, even if you're amazing. Um, there's a phenomenon, no matter what year you're in, uh, you'll go away from the first year thinking you're amazing. Uh, you won't do anything over the summer. You'll then come back and everyone who wasn't amazing has done loads of stuff over the summer, and all of a sudden they're ahead of you. And it can be quite a shock to, to the system coming from being the best to suddenly not being the best. So yeah, keep, keep your skills, even if you're graduating or over the summer. Keep your skills sharp, I think. Would, would so that be reasonable? Slump, yeah. To, right? Sorry, Costas? A sophomore slump. Oh, yeah, sophomore slump. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, has anyone else got any questions? Oh, Tim. Hello, Tim. Got a question for George. <clears throat> hey, yeah, George. Um, would you say for the students, obviously a lot of people do want to, you know, go and work at Blizzard in these companies. Would you say that the key thing for them is to go and focus on like um, low poly artwork? rather than maybe trying to make that art look exactly like Blizzard's work? Um, yeah, because I think if you work, if you focus too much on trying to just emulate that specific company's work, you kind of might end up running into the issue of just 
getting good at copying stuff rather than creating your own stuff. And if you were to get that job at, say, Blizzard or whoever, then you want to be able to help them make original content, you know, not just copy. So it's good to show that you have a knowledge of their their work and you, you probably only need like one or two pieces and then like your other pieces can just show uh, extensions of that. Maybe you're taking their style in a different direction and that obviously goes for, you know, any company out there. This is more consideration for when you get your first job, but uh, once you get over that hurdle and you get your first job in the industry, you're probably then going to want to start thinking about where do you want to go from there? What route do you want to take? Because if you don't do that, you can run the risk of stagnating and ending up in like the same role or the same position for quite a long time and not really growing much as an artist or, or as an individual. So have an idea of where you want to go. And the usual path goes like junior artist, mid-level artist, senior artist, and then you'd be like a lead artist or a principal artist and an art director. So have a little think about which one of those you want to go down because um, the lead artist and principal artist route are quite different. Uh, a lead artist is more of a like, a bit more of a managerial role and you'll be doing more like organization of your team and a little bit like a conductor at an orchestra where they don't really play an instrument as such but their instrument is kind of like the whole orchestra that's sort of how it works being a lead artist whereas a principal artist is more like you really really hone your skills and you're like a god in whatever area that you're working in and you lead by example and like the quality and the standard of your work is what the other artists on your team will aspire to and you might take a bit more of a mentorship approach to teaching the rest of your team but you don't do as much of the uh the actual like organization and managing your team um, and it should be noted that yeah especially going down the lead route it can be a very stressful role because you're no longer just responsible for yourself but you're responsible for like an entire team of artists and you have a huge impact on the project so yeah all those things can be a little bit stressful but uh, it's worth it Oh, we have, do we have a question from someone? Uh, Marcel? Yeah, um, it's not related to the uh, role as a um, lead artist, so um, I don't know if that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> okay, um, I wonder if you should or could beg for an art test when uh, you apply for jobs, because um, I feel like my portfolio is pretty much focused on hard surface stuff, but um, mainly because it's it's kind of my best skill, I would say, but not ne necessarily the one I enjoy the most doing. So I also applied for Sumo Digital and stuff like that. Um, and they do mostly stylized, uh, stylized stuff. And I wonder if it would be okay to ask for an art test because my portfolio doesn't show um, what they want, probably. Um, well, I think if you're applying for a role, there's no point asking for an art test if you haven't been sort of like offered the role because that would just be a little bit of a, a waste of your time. The art tests take a fair bit yeah. of time. Um, so it's worth contacting them and if they've got a role going, try and apply for it. And then it's really, it's really down to the company whether they're going to give you an art test or not. Um, I personally am not a big fan of them because they're a huge time sink, so I like refuse to do them anymore. Yeah. But um, yeah, when you're starting out, you, you may have to. I had to do it for my, my first uh, role. Um, so yeah, reach out to them, see what they've got going. Yeah, for me, it's just hard because many people say don't um, or do specialize in something and don't be too um, focused on many different things, right? To get your first job at least. But I'm interested in so many different styles and workflows that it's kind of hard. And that's um, yeah, why I see um, myself um, in indie studios probably more than in like AAA. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a big part of it because it's like people say not to specialize and they say not to be too generalized. But really, it yeah. depends what your goal is. If your goal is AAA, then by all means specialize because that's like the way that AAA is going right now is that the more specialized you are, the better, because the teams are getting bigger and they're finding that things work a lot more efficiently if you're really, really good at 
just doing hard surface or really, really good at just doing like organic stuff, you know, it's much better to utilize your skills in that one area that you're really good at and you're passionate about than trying to get you as a hard surface artist to try and do like organic stuff as well. It's just, it's inefficient and it's a bit of a waste of their time and money. So they'd rather just have a specific artist for that. Right. Whereas with indie, they don't have the budget for that. And a generalized artist is, is better. Yeah. So. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Marcel. Thanks. Um, Thanks. We're, we're almost out of time. Uh, Shannon, um, hey, you got Shannon. A, a quick, quick question you'd like to ask. <laughs> I just wanted to, I just wanted to add um, to Marcel, what Marcel was saying and what George was saying that it's actually completely fine for certain studios to have like a mixed portfolio. Like that's definitely what we look for at Sumo. Like we actually want to see that you can work on like different art styles and diff like just a complete range because especially if the studio has like a portfolio of work that, you know, covers all different areas, like to show that you can do that is really beneficial. So yeah, that's just what I wanted to add. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> nice Thanks, to see you again, good to know. Hey. <laughs> uh, so just remind everyone Shannon's joining us for well she's here now obviously and joining us for the Q&A and works at Sumo Digital as a character artist there so um, okay George uh, thank you so much I apologize if I hijacked your talk with too many questions <laughs> but thank That's you very much quite right. thank you for your insights it's really appreciated uh, are you able to join us for the Q&A panel yeah later? absolutely absolutely awesome. brilliant thank you thank you very much George That's quite uh, right. my pleasure to George here. please Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> I wish yeah. you the best of luck with your future careers and everything.